So uh, yesterday, I was speaking at a church, a uh, men's group. It was at 7 a.m., uh, which meant I had to get up really early for a preacher, you know, that's, uh, uh, especially on a Saturday, you know. Uh, so I had to get up, and, and it was on the south side of town. I mean, it's not hard to get to, it's, you know, it's not difficult, but I had to be there early. So I, I put it in my GPS, just, you know, just, I don't know, whatever. I just, I, I just do that so I can keep track of time, mostly. And uh, it's real. It's not hard. I, I, I even threw it on, the, you know, the, the map. You just go down to the I-80. You go east to take the 235 exit. Then you take the uh, east 14th exit. You go down the uh, Army Post Road. You take a right, and, and you're right there. Not a big, not complicated, right? E- even even for me, uh, and I can get lost anywhere. Well, the funny thing happened is, is I'm, I'm driving and I'm kind of thinking about what I'm going to say, but I'm on honoring wives and that kind of thing, and, and uh, I'm listening to the radio a little bit, just, just kind of not really paying attention. And all of a sudden, I look up and I think, why is the farmer's market in front of me? This is really weird. Uh, I, I, I got off track a little bit and, and, and just kind of, I mean, I, I, I don't know what happened. I really don't know what happened because I'm like, why am I down? I have no reason to be downtown. This is not on my path. It's not where I'm going. And, and, and then it took a while to even get out because there's like buildings under construction and streets closed and one-way roads and, and the farmer's market and all this stuff was there. And I finally got back. I ended up uh, going down on Indianola, back to East 14th and, and down. And I still wasn't late, so it, it was good. Uh, but, but I was getting, starting to get nervous because the GPS kept recalculating, <laughs> you know, and it kept, kept going a minute, minute further. I thought, oh, boy, this, this is crazy. And, and I was kind of thinking yesterday, I thought, you know, that, that is, it's not hard for that to happen, you know. I mean, you think with a GPS, you, you just follow the GPS, you know. Um, but it's not that hard to happen in life. That's why we're doing this series. Because you, you get married and, and, and you, you have the greatest of intention. You might even put safety guards in place. You might, you might have the greatest expectations of what married life is going to be. And you do all kinds of things to make it happen. But even when you're thinking about it, it's possible to get off course and get in the middle of some jumble mess somewhere, and then you can get lost easily. So that, that's really why we're doing this series. It's, just, it's, it's not super complicated, but it's a, it's a very important reminder for all of us. If you happen to be in the middle of some maze somewhere and lost, you're trying to get, find your way back, hopefully this is helping you find your way back. If you're strong, hopefully this will make you stronger, stay on the path, and do, do the right thing. So, so honestly, it was a pretty good illustration of life uh, as I found myself just, just like I had no intent. I mean, how does that even happen? I don't know. I don't know how many couples have come in my office over the years and thought, I don't know how this happened. I don't know either, uh, but let's get you straightened out. That's what this is about. Let's look at the foundational things in the, in the five love languages that we're talking about in this series. Number one is we all have a primary emotional love language. I would, wish I could tell you that I made this up because I'd sell lots of books and my house would be, probably be bigger than it is right now. But I did not, but we are glad that Dr. Gary Chapman did. He identified five love languages, words of affirmation, quality time, receiving gifts, acts of service, physical touch. Um, you notice in the video announcement video, I said words of, what did I say, affection. I don't know, I don't know. It, it, it's close, but, but affirmation, affirmation, words of affirmation. Number two, we all have love tanks that uh, store how loved we feel, which leads to number three, a full love tank leads to a healthy relationship. So uh, we're going to talk about words of affirmation today. If my love language is words of affirmation, when you affirm me, when you say nice things about me, you compliment me, you you, you say positive things, it, it builds me up, it makes me feel better. We all like to hear that, but if that's your love language, you just feel fuller than, than, than before. Uh, so it's, imp- it's important. How many of you have this? This is probably the most popular, one of the most popular love languages. Do you took the test? The two, three? I mean, I mean some are like, oh, yeah. It, it, it's a biggie. It's a biggie. Words of affirmation is, is a biggie. So a lot of you probably uh, have this. And what I want to do today is look at four specific ways to fill this emotional love tank if this is your primary love language. If your spouse or, or key people in your life have this as a love language, pay close attention because you, you have to engage in this. You can't just assume, hey, I said that nice thing a few weeks ago. I hope that kept you going. You, know, you, have, to, you have to keep the love tank full. So number one, regularly hand out unsolicited comments. That word unsolicited is there on purpose. It's, 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 kind of a, it's kind of a key word there. Proverbs 25.11 says a word aptly spoken is like apples of gold in settings of silver. Uh, what Solomon is saying, and it says we're a, a right word at the right time is really, really, really valuable. How many of you can identify with that? 
everybody with the love tank, <laughs> words of affirmation with the love language, uh, you're saying, oh, oh yeah. A right word at the right time can energize a person. It, it, it can uh, renew a person's spirit if they're down. It can uh, build or rebuild, re-energize confidence if you're having a moment of doubt, uh, a moment of wavering. It will build you up. It can move you forward if you're emotionally stuck. This is especially true to someone whose primary love language is words of affirmation. Uh, so uh, what we tend to do is we tend to be really good at handing out compliments to, to strangers. This is like a lot of things. Uh, if a server is doing really well, you might compliment them. Uh, you, the, the neighbor keeps their yard looking, boy, well, you might compliment Boy, your yard looks really great, you know, making me look bad. You know, you, what, however you might compliment them. I mean, you're, you're building them up. You, you, you compliment people all the time. A co-worker bails you out, you thank them, you compliment them. Uh, I can't believe how many times over the years I've been with Cheryl anywhere in public and a stranger, some of them, neither one of us have ever met this person before, will come and say, I just love your hair. Your hair is so great. You know? And it's a stranger. Where do you get your hair done? And they get in a, in a conversation, and Cheryl's like, oh, she walks about three inches taller after that, that happens. And there's been a number of times I thought, I, I didn't even notice. <laughs> I, you know? Um, shouldn't I have been the one who has said that? To, did, did she need, did God say, okay, idiot, you're not going to say it. I'll bring a stranger. You, you know? um, because I, I should have noticed that first. I left with her, I was in the car with her, I was wherever we were with her, but it's happened a number of times. And, and I think, gosh, how silly is that, that I wouldn't mention such a thing when a complete stranger, and I guess maybe that's more of a girl thing, I, I don't know, because I've never said it to a guy, no guy's ever said it to me. <laughs> hey, I <laughs> love your hair, you know, I was like, I just cut it off, it's great, <laughs> you know, it's like, no, 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 big, no big deal. Uh, so it's, 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 a, it's kind of a, it's, it's, it is a very Im important thing. When we have loved ones who do something beyond the call of duty, when, when, when they, they look extra special and extra good someday, or they do something extra special, they go out of their way to service, we ought to acknowledge that rather than just expect it. Or rather than think, well, of course, you love me. Why wouldn't you do that? Or, or well, you know, you like to serve. I mean, it, it still should be acknowledged when, when the important people in our life do things uh, for us. Alan and, and Shannon, where are you? I saw you guys walk in. One month anniversary today. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Grandma yelled the loudest. <laughs> uh, so they uh, they are now experts um, in, in marriage, and uh, we'll be having a little advice uh, booth over here af after the service. But uh, the day of their wedding was a month ago today, and uh, you, you know everything that goes into the wedding, like all all the stuff, right? There's hours of preparation, there weeks of picking out the right dress and the right colors and, and the theme and the flowers, and um, the week prior they're doing their nails, and you know, I, I don't even know all this stuff. I just heard heard reports, you know, oh, they did that today, cool, you know, and and and, and all this stuff happens, and and the day of the event. There's, there's crazy stuff. It's a, a flurry of activity. Uh, the venue is uh, half an hour away from here, and uh, um, for some reason I had planned something awkwardly, and I had to like go twice on the day of the wedding back home to, to do something or get something. And, and so it was kind of a crazy day. They're, they spend the whole day, you know, they bring people in for makeup, they bring people in for hairs, they're, they're wearing the best of the best and all the greatest stuff. And everybody's, I mean, they're duded up, right? That, 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 that's, that if you're ever going to look great, it's, it's wedding day, right? So, so I've got a daughter who's getting married. I have another daughter who's in the wedding, you know. And, and that morning, at some point, it could have been early afternoon, I don't remember when, I met with, with Danielle, and I don't know, we were talking something, you know, I don't know, talking business. And, and I'm thinking, yeah, 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 yeah I got, we're doing this stuff. I've got to get back home. I still haven't even showered yet, you know, and I, I probably had to get cleaned up and all this stuff. And, and, and I even thought to myself, man, she looks nice. She looks, she's gorgeous. You know, it's like, and uh, um, I hadn't seen Shanna yet, so I can't, you know, of course, you're, it's all about the bride that day, but, but I hadn't seen Shanna yet, but I'm thinking, man, Danielle looks gorgeous. And, and I get back in the truck, and I'm, I'm driving home, and I get halfway home, and I think, gosh, I should have said something to her, you know? <laughs> so I sent her a, a little text. Hey, I thought it, but I never really said it. You look gorgeous. Little smiley face. You know what's real when it's a smiley face emoji, right? Uh, <laughs> Uh, and uh, did that fill the tank? It made me cry. Oh. <laughs> See? Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I made her cry. <laughs> I mean, 
Like, why didn't I say that? And I was in, in front. I mean, at least I, I made up for it, kind of, halfway. I met you halfway uh, there. I was like, we, we, we'll do it for strangers. We'll, 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 we'll go over the, the, the top for, for people that maybe aren't even as important to us, but man, the key people in your life, they fill, fill their tank. They fill their tank. Now, now, if she would have said, hey, what do you think? How do I look? And I, then I said something, I still would have counted, but not as much. It's, it's unsolicited. It's like she didn't say, hey, Dad, would you text me and tell me how I look? That, that would have been a little emptier, you know, but it was because it was unsolicited. It meant a lot to her, and it was very important. Filled the tank, made her cry. Uh, we'll call that a win, right? Words of affirmation. Words of affirmation. C- compliments aren't that difficult. I mean, it's, it's not hard to say, hey, you really look nice today. Hey, I like your new shirt. Wow, your hair, you really, that really looks nice today. Um, not that it didn't look yes, or, you know, fine yesterday, but it really looks well. You've got your good hair day. You know, it doesn't take a lot, lot to, to um, compliment someone. Uh, but again, if your spouse has to ask, how do I look? If they're pulling it out of it, that you're making them work too hard uh, to, to fill their tank. You, 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 fill, you fill their, done, their tank. Uh, they're not dumb. Uh, they, they, they know. They know if you're faking it. They know if you're just mailing it in. Um, just, just compliment, compliment. It doesn't have to be poetic. You don't have to be silver-tongued. Uh, it can even be a little bit awkward uh, at times, but if it's genuine, it, it counts. Do you remember the great uh, film classic, Napoleon Dynamite? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Napoleon had no idea he was filling little Deb's Love tank. Do you, do you remember what he says when they're at the school dance? I like your sleeves. <laughs> and, and if you remember, like her eyes, like in the whole, the whole, she looks like this the whole movie. The one moment her eyes brighten up and she smiles is when he says, I like your sleeves. <laughs> and she says, thank you. I made them myself. <laughs> An unsolicited comment. It is huge. It is huge when you feel, if you want to fill someone's tank, if you have someone in your life whose love language is words of affirmation. Now, now you have to be careful uh, with this, too. You've got to engage your mind a little bit. Um, uh, our, our expert married couple um, was telling us, they were telling us last night that uh, this past week, uh, uh, Shannon was in the kitchen and Alan came in and, and picked her up and he said, you're not nearly as heavy as I thought you were. Um, now that was a compliment. <laughs> um, it's the kind of compliment you can only get away with like the first month. <laughs> so I think you've used it. <laughs> um, I'm not sure how well that uh, counseling booth is going to work <laughs> for you all. <laughs> Uh, and then we were talking between services. I forgot about this, but uh, my poor wife, when uh, she was pregnant with Danielle, like eight months pregnant, and we were in the process of moving to Atlantic, the first, I introduced her to the church in Atlantic by saying, here's my very large wife, Cheryl. <laughs> uh, uh, it's, it's hard to dig out of that. Um, it's hard, it's hard. So be, be careful, be careful. You've got to engage your mind. If you're going to um, do that words of affirmation, it can backfire on you if, 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 if you're not careful. Uh, Ephes- or Ecclesiastes 6.11 says, the more the words, the less the meaning. How does that profit anyone? So all, don't just be handed a, hey, 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 good looking good. You know, if that's all you say every single day, it doesn't mean a whole lot. Make, make it meaningful. Make, 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 make it special. Number two, uh, build people up with encouraging words. Build them up, build them up. It's easy to tear down, and, and honestly, we remember the tear downs longer, don't you? Build up, build up. Pleasant words are a honeycomb, sweet to the soul, healing to the bones. I, I like what uh, Chapman says about encouraging words in, in this chapter, uh, that they inspire courage. Uh, if you ever not quite felt, not known if you should maybe go for the interview or, or the promotion or the job or the whatever, you know, the thing, and it's your loved one who, who builds you up and gives you the courage to do it, you know, that's, that's what this is, this is talking about. We all have areas in our lives where we lack courage, we feel insecure, 
And, and, and if you want to, that part of filling the tank of that loved one who has words of affirmation is, is to build them up. It inspires greatness uh, to be, you, you be their biggest cheerleader. Uh, help them see through the strong points, that, that, that they their own strong points that they might not see that themselves. Now, I, I can't imagine, it, it's, it's um, how do I say this? Uh, sometimes it's hard. I, I don't want to sound sexist. But women, is it hard sometimes to compare yourself to other people? Um, uh, imagine if, if your husband had like 900 other wives, you know? Uh, do you ever would you compare yourself at all? <laughs> you know, I mean, it's different. It's hard enough, like, to the neighbor or, or whoever, the person. You know, uh, uh, imagine comparing yourself to that. Solomon, in, in Song of Solomon, He's talking about, we don't know which, well, I guess we do, but I mean, we're talking to a wife, and, and he's really building her up here. Let's, let's forget the 900 wives thing, because that's just crazy. I don't even get that myself. But uh, <laughs> chapter one, he's writing to, to wife, his wife, I liken you, my darling, to a mare harnessed to one of the chariots of Pharaoh. Use that line this week. See how that went. That'd be great. <laughs> Ah, oh, your cheeks are beautiful with earrings, your neck with strings of jewels. Now, to, to her, this meant something. It was like, oh, he was building her up. He was, he was, he was you are beautiful. Yeah, I have 900 other wives. Man, look at you. <laughs> look at you. And she returns a favor later on in chapter 3. Look, it's Solomon. She's, she's building him up here. Now, he's the wisest guy on the earth. He's filthy wealthy. I mean, there's, there's nothing going on wrong in his life, but she still builds him up. It's Solomon's carry, just escorted by 60 warriors of the noblest of Israel, all of them wearing the sword, all experienced in battle, each with his sword at its side, prepared for the terrors of the night. King Solomon made for himself the carriage. He made it of wood from Lebanon. Its posts he made of silver, its base of gold, its seat was upholstered with purple, its interior lovingly inlaid by the daughters of Jerusalem. Come out, you daughters of Zion. Look at King Solomon wearing the crown, the crown with which his mother crowned him on the day of his wedding. The day his heart rejoiced. Like, look at my husband. He's the most awesome guy in the world. He's a great king. Everybody come and look at my husband. She's building him up. He's building her up. It goes on in, in chapter 4 where uh, he, he says some more. There, there are some things we're just, I'm just choosing not to read today from Song of Solomon. You can read it on your own later. Uh, uh, in, in chapter 4, verse 1, how beautiful you are, my darling. He didn't have to say this to her, or he did it. Oh, how beautiful your eyes behind your veil are doves. Your hair is like a flock of goats. Somebody tried that between services. It didn't, didn't fly. Uh, your, your, your hair is like a flock of goats descending from Mount Gilead. Your teeth are like a flock of sheep, each shorn coming up from the washing. Each has a squin. You haven't lost any teeth. <laughs> Look at you. <laughs> Not one of them is alone. Uh, your lips are like scarlet ribbon. Your mouth is lovely. Your temples behind your veil are the halves of pomegranate. Your neck, like the flower of David, built with elegance on it, having um, hung a, a thousand shields, all of them shields of warriors. Uh, verse 7, you, all beautiful you are, my darling. There is no flaw in you. Were there flaws in her? I mean, come on, of course there were. <laughs> He didn't, he didn't look at the flaws. He didn't point out the flaws. He didn't say, here's where you're weak. He didn't see, Here, here's how you could be a better wife. Here's how you can make me happier. Here's how I think you'd be more impressive. Boy, if you lose 10 pounds and build this up and build, you know, whatever. He, he, didn't, he, didn't, he, didn't, he didn't do that. Of course she has flaws. He knows it. She knows it. But that's, he, 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 he's building her up. You have no flaws. Look, you have, you have all your teeth. It's so, you're beautiful. You're, you're wonderful. You're wonderful. They say out of the 8 billion or so people on the planet, about 8 billion or so of them struggle with insecurity sometimes. Uh, your job is to build up your spouse. Uh, they have enough people build, tearing them down. They have enough people telling them their deficiencies and, and where they lack. I mean, be honest, but, but, but build them up. Be, be strong. Be strong. If all they hear about is what they're doing wrong and how they fail and all their shortcomings, pretty soon they get the message, I'm not very valuable, am I? I'm not all that valuable in this relationship. Uh, there's not much right about me. And while you might want it to motivate them, it'll usually go to turn the opposite, and, and they'll start going the other direction. Uh, build them up with compliments, with encouragement. They'll become better people. Number three, run everything through your kindness filter. We talked about this uh, in Corinthians 13 series we did recently, uh, so I won't talk much, but um, it is pretty important, the kindness filter. Proverbs 12:18, reckless words 
pierced like a sword, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. You've experienced both of those. You have uh, said both of those, you know, because you're human, I know it. Uh, every relationship has reckless words and, and healing words. Uh, when, when you're dating, we tend to choose our words a little more carefully. Uh, we tend to think more about what we say. We don't want to push the person away. We don't want to be overly aggressive. We don't want to you know, say anything unkind to them. But there's a tendency, once the marriage is over, once you've settled down and settled in, into your, your new life, you take that filter off. And sometimes we can just be just downright mean to people that we love the most. We just, we just are, it's just we, the, way, the way we are. I like the uh, distinction that uh, Gary Chapman makes between the tone of voice and the content in a, in a, in a, in a sentence. Uh, you can say in a happy way, well, I'd be happy to take the garbage out. You know, that, that says one thing. You can say the same thing. Yeah, I'd be happy to take the garbage out. You know, and, and it means a completely different thing. So tone of voice is involved in this kindness filter. Uh, find a kind way to communicate. And it's okay to bring up negative things. Life is full of negative things. You, know, you, you need to address things once in a while, but do it in a, in a kind way and in a gentle way. Uh, you know, it really disappoints me when you don't take the garbage out. Uh, bat your eyes a few times. I'm going to do it. It works. I don't know. But, um, uh, so, so, so use your kindness filter. Last one is number four. Use hum humility when you speak. Everyone who exalts himself will be humbled. He who humbles himself will be exalted. Uh, making demands of your spouse uh, is not generally a good way to build intimacy. Uh, it, just, it, just, it just doesn't. It doesn't work that way. Uh, using guilt does not uh, create intimacy. Uh, pulling rank does not build intimacy in, in a marriage. Uh, we had uh, made a decision, Cheryl and I, before we had children, that our goal was, if at all possible, for her to stay home uh, and help and, and do the bulk of the, the child rearing. And if that wasn't possible, at most she would work uh, of a part-time job. And uh, after Danielle was born, she was able to stay home about two weeks. And uh, we were about getting hungry. And so she in, went into the workforce again. Uh, somehow on paper, it was different than reality. We cut our income in half, bought a house, moved. All these things happened. It's like, oh, I didn't know how much diapers cost. You know, we hadn't have done that before. And uh, so, so the budget was different than we thought. So she goes to work, but, but, but purposefully, all these years, she had part-time jobs. She worked at the Chamber of Commerce in Atlantic, where it was like 9 to 2, 8 to 2, um, so that uh, it wasn't all day. Uh, when we moved here, she was able to get into the school where, where she was off when, the, when the, the children were off. That was, just, that was just our personal choice. That's what we had, had decided to do. Now, the, one of the worst things I could have done to her over this period of time would have been to pull rank. You know, my schedule is more important than yours because I make the money. You know, uh, you know my decisions are, are rank higher than yours because... Uh, I, I'm, I'm the ruler around here. Uh, how, how would you survive on your income? You, you know, that, that wouldn't work well a, at all. Uh, if my schedule is more important, my money is more important, my position is more important, and so forth. Uh, be, because we all, I, I, I understood her role was more valuable than any money I could bring. I mean, she was raising our children. Look, I think they turned out okay. She did a great job. I couldn't, I couldn't put a price tag. I couldn't put a price on that. Um, so that, that was our, our personal decision and how we chose uh, to do that. Uh, so, so I had to, at times, even when I was tempted to, to pull rank or, or, or something like that, to, to, to back off and use humility, and actually it, you have to work a little harder and communicate, um, here's what I think, what do you think, and come up with an agreement on things. So, so use humility, especially, especially if the love language is words of affirmation, because that is the quickest way to deflate a balloon, is the pull rank or use guilt or, or whatever negative type of communication you're, you're going to use. You make demands of people. You're no longer a partner or a lover. You're, you become a tyrant in the relationship, and it, uh, they feel belittled. Uh, so, so just be careful. Use your words very, very, very carefully. All right, assignments. We uh, like to finish each of these with an assignment. 
Uh, write the words. Words are important. Uh, somewhere where you're going to see it. If you don't have a smartphone, write it down on sticky notes or something. But if you have a smart, smartphone, put it in there so it just reminds you at whatever time every day, oh, yeah, words are important, just to remind you. Because you're going to forget this as soon as you walk out the door. It's Labor Day. You're going to grill. You're going to forget everything. And Tuesday, you're going to forget how important words are, and you're going to say something mean. So, so remind yourself for however long it takes, words are important. Put, that, put it in your calendar. Uh, number two, make a goal to give your spouse uh, one compliment every day uh, for a month. Um, now, now, you have to be careful. You can't be phoning it in. They'll know. <laughs> He'll know. She'll know. Whatever. Uh, be, be careful. Make, make sure it's legit, real, confident uh, a compliment. And number three, write a love letter to your spouse. Um, no, a text with a smiley face does not count. <laughs> uh, make it a real love, lo love language, uh, love letter. Uh, write it old school. Get a piece of paper. Write to it. And, and, and that'll cover several love languages. And, and send it to your wife, husband, whoever. Uh, and uh, you can quote Solomon, Sol Song of Solomon if you want, whatever. Uh, that's between you guys. Uh, work, it out. work that out. That's, that's your assignment for the day. Uh, in words of affirmation, um, you guys did a great job listening, every one of you. I'm so proud of you. 